Okay, guys, we're going to talk about a new medium today. And remember, medium equals material. We can write that down if you want. Medium. Medium equals materials. Material. All right, so a new medium today. But let's talk about what you'll need first um, the supplies you'll need obviously you're going to need your art book you're going to need a number two pencil to take notes which we will do along the way you're going to need one um, some of you have two paint brushes you might just have one um, this is my preferred paint brush between this one and this one um, this one's okay um, but and like I said, it's useful. So it's, I gave you guys everything I had. The next thing you're, all, you're also gonna need is um, the paints. Um, not everyone's looks the same. Not everyone has the same colors. Um, however, everyone has a new uh, palette of paints. This is called a dry palette, which means the Paints are dry until you add water. Um, this is obviously the container it's in, and you can use this as a mixing device, but I won't. I'm going to show you what I use instead to keep this clean. But you can if you don't have any other option. So um, you'll want to make sure uh, that you let this dry before you close it up because those will get all gross. All right, and of course, for watercolor paints, which is what we're using, you need water. And right here, this is not salsa, I promise. It's water. We're going to use, I'm gonna use, and you can use a yogurt container. Um, I have, you know, used all sorts of things. You can use a pickle jar that doesn't have pickles in it anymore, but we're also gonna use this lid. So if something is plastic, it'd be easier. Um, but you can use also something that doesn't match. You could use a yogurt container for your water and a salsa lid for your mixing. You'll also need something to dry your brush with. This is an old paint rag that I've had for too long, um, but I clean it every once in a while. <laughs> um, so First, after that, let me tell you guys, I took a graduate course, um, graduate level course for teaching watercolors, and I hadn't really taken a formal class in a long, long time. But these are some of the paintings and things that I've done with different um, types of, you know, watercolor papers, and there are tons of them. And if we had, um, we were in the classroom, that's what we'd be doing. This is a um, Winslow Homer painting that I tried to recreate with watercolors. He's a watercolor artist. There's mine, not like his, but here's my painting. I actually do like the um, watercolor medium a lot. These are different things you can do. Um, with watercolors and as you can see this is mine from my course but you mess up and you're gonna mess up here's an orange dot right in the middle of the mountains I mean that happens um, it, I said color theory and how to fix it or not equals big, big mistakes so there are a lot of things that we're gonna take a look at um, like I said, this is one of my favorite graduate courses that I took. Um, it's just, you know, pretty versatile. Watercolor is forgiving. It can be messy. It can be neat. It could be anything you want it. Um, these are just some notes. You know, this is a different way of taking notes, kind of like we're going to do today. Um, different ways to for a cleanup and this is actually a painting I did a while ago of a bluebird. All right, notice that all of my pages are also signed. I don't know if you can, oh yeah, 
You can see that down there. I sign all of my pages just like you do. Okay, so watercolor is obviously something that you can, you know, is like I said, it's forgiving, it can be messy, it can be neat. You might have, you're going to make a mistake, I promise you. Um, but you can also kind of go with it and figure it out and if it doesn't work. So watercolor, okay, watercolor. And I'm gonna add lots of color to this later, but we're gonna test a few things first because some of you may not um, remember how to use watercolor or have never done it or just need a recap. When I took, um, my watercolor class, I hadn't been trained formally in watercolors ever, so um, I've just dabbled in it. Ha, huh, pun intended. So I'm gonna get my water here, and this is where I'm gonna mix my colors. I'm gonna get my palette in front of me. This is um, the painting palette. And again, I have all of these colors. But um, when you start with watercolors, you want to start in the back first, so you'll start with or um, your lightest colors also. So I'm gonna pick one of the, oh, let me show you about this brush. I almost forgot. So this brush has water in it. Let me show you. So when you squeeze, it says squeeze. When you squeeze, the water comes out of the bristles, okay? So that um, you, as you can see, mine's still a little pink. Um, you can use that. Um, the only part is it's a little hard to control, so if you um, have too much water, you're gonna have to use your paper towel or towel. Um, remember, if you're using a real towel, make sure you ask um, whoever is in charge if you can use it first. So you'll get some water in your brush and then add some paint and paint with it that way. So that, and to fill it, you need to unscrew the top, and you just go to the sink and add a little water in there. And then you screw it back on. Or you can just use it like a regular brush, but that's up to you. Make sure you put the lid on or your water will escape. All right, so I'm going to show you how to use both brushes, well, all three brushes. And I am going to, every once in a while, take a note, like I could use that for something, or that would be good for this. So you're going to start with light colors first. First. Light colors. Colors. <laughs> light colors first. So I'm gonna start with yellow, that's my lightest color, and I get a little bit of water on my brush. It's not dripping. If it is dripping, I'm just going to use my towel to kind of dry it off a little bit. And I'm gonna add some paint to my brush. Now I'm not leaving a whole bunch of water in that, um, in that space, and I can actually spread it out on here just to see how yellow it is before I make a mark. So I'm gonna add some yellow, get some more from here. Notice I don't have to use much paint at all for a light yellow. Now if I want that darker, a darker yellow, I'm gonna dry off my brush just a little bit. It still has some dampness to it. I'm gonna add a little bit more and see you can kind of see that line through the middle but let's say I added too dark all I do is add some water and blend that out all right so now as you can see there's kind of a shine or a shimmer to my paper that paper you don't want it to get too wet so um, because it uh, will tear or rip so I'm gonna clean out my brush and move on to the next color. So when you clean out your brush, you want to swish it around, um, get off any extra paint, or I'm sorry, water, 
that would be there and I'm going to move that over. Now I'm going to work into my orange. And um, I'm going to add some water here. See how much orange I have. So I just added that in with my yellow that was already on here. There we go. I added more water and you see it pre uh, makes more paint essentially. So I'm going to blend that in so it kind of looks like it's fading into orange. I don't want to go too far into yellow so it makes that paper too soggy. And I'm going to move from the yellow with the orange. All right, now I'm going to add a teeny little bit of red, teeny tiny. Red is very, very bold. Red is very bold, bold, bold. And notice I'm not talking much about color at all. I'm talking about watercolors and how to use it. That was a little too dark, so I'm gonna add some water from my mixing tray, also known as the salsa lid. And I am going to add there. So I have um, I've added light colors first, light colors first, um, yellow. First, orange, second, very little red, third, very little, and let's say about the water. Not too much water, not too much water. Shiny equals almost too much. H2O. All right. All right. So now let's explore. Well, let's try another brush. For those of you who have this brush, this came with the uh, watercolor set. I first make sure my brush is wet and I'm going to try this blue. Let's do some cool colors. This brush requires it to have a little bit more water than the other one. Let's add some purple. Not the best brush, but pretty sure all of those who got this brush got a second brush for this reason. And I'm going to add some red to this one too because purple and blue, I'm sorry, purple and red, no, start over. Blue and red make purple, so they're good together. And then maybe a green on this side. All right. All right, so let's try this brush. So I pop this off and I'm gonna use this a lot more because I add my water here. Then I get some, let's try some browns. And maybe even, let's add a color to brown to make a beautiful toned color. Let's add, let's get this. Let's add blue. I love blue and brown together. Blue and brown together. It's like the beach. The beach. All right. So what I want you to try is um, brown plus a color, brown or gray plus color. Mix it in. 
So I want you to try a couple of different things. Just try some different colors that maybe mix with each other or just try a couple different colors. Maybe they don't work together. Maybe you want to try a dry brush. So these are all wet brush, wet brush techniques, wet brush here. Now I'm going to show you some dry brush techniques. So in order to get a dry brush technique, you almost have to have the brush completely dry. So I'm going to add in But notice it's still wet. It still has some moisture to it. And you can go back in and add details over dried wet brush techniques. Let me clean that out and change colors. Now, if I want to go and add in orange here and mix, I use a wet brush to mix in, almost completely get rid of those dry brush. So you can go back and fix some accidents with water too, if you like. So I just used that dry brush technique, but added some water to it to give it kind of like a faded or hazy um, transition. I can also soften edge lines with just adding a little bit of water. So what you're gonna do is just trial the, you know, try, you're gonna make some errors um, and that's okay. However, when you are done, you're going to sign and date the, I almost wrote the wrong year. Sign and date your filled page. Make sure you fill the rest. Try some different techniques. Maybe try to, you know, make some um, flowers. Maybe I'll do that. Let's see. How that goes. Try different techniques. I'm going to let that dry and add some layers. Um, watercolor is about layering. Layering. And in between those layers, between layers, you need to let them dry. Let the paint dry. Paint dry. So, so in order to add some dry brush work to this rose, which it'll eventually somewhat look like, I need to wait until that red dries. But in the meantime, I can add some green and brown for the stem. And I add brown to green because Although greens in real life are green, they also have a little brown to them. And I'm gonna mix it right in. Okay, all right. And maybe I'll try something with, I'm gonna try to make a dark blue because in this we only have like a cerulean blue, a light blue. Okay, so I'm gonna try to mix a little black with that blue. That's a little bit too much. And see if I can make a darker blue. Oh, that's getting a little too damp with moisture. There we go. 
It's a little bit darker. So I'm going to say blue plus black. So I remember. So what I suggest you do is take some notes as you are working. Whoa, that is way too much. So what I did here is I loaded a ton of paint onto that brush and see what happens is it's like, Ooh, that is way too dark. And if you do that, you will lose, you will not have any paints left after your test page. So there's a couple of things you need to do. First of all, I'm gonna let that red sit for a while because it got a little too wet. See, it's super shiny. Um, I must have left some water sitting in there and water in here is very bad. So after you're done, you're going to have to make sure you let this dry before you close it up because this will keep the cakes too uh, damp and they will kind of, they will become very gross and they will be ruined and you won't have any more paints. So um, you can use paint to soften up that super red red. But I'm going to show you. So there's a couple of things. So this is layered. We have rocks and some water looking. Um, these are different techniques that we're gonna take a look at, but we might not do all of them. And we're eventually gonna use watercolors to look at color theory, okay? So make sure you fill the rest of your page up as much as you can. And actually, if you want, you can try your Sharpie marker on it or um, maybe add in some color pencils to see how they look together. So let's talk about cleaning up your area. Make sure that you don't have any paint left on this because after you, um, if paint dries on here and then you add water, you'll have those paints again. So you'll get your paper towel or washcloth if you're allowed to use a washcloth and wipe that clean so there's no more paint on it. And um, make sure that your brushes are completely dried out or at least soaked out. Um, this one just make sure the tip doesn't have extra water in it. Let this completely dry. Let your paints completely dry. Try, make sure you put this up out of your sibling, younger siblings or any siblings um, way so they don't want to help you and paint. So um, good luck. Make sure you take a picture of this and submit it into the assignment before the end of class. Good luck.